Piper at the Gates of Dawn is an album firmly rooted in the sights and sounds of childhood. That is, before, in the words of John Betjeman, that dark hour of reason grows. <laughs> Barrett's lyrics are a poignant reminder of the fragility of childhood, drawn from the paradigms of uh, fairy tale and whimsy. There was a wide-eyed, through-the-looking-glass sense of wonder in these songs with their sing-song cadences and uh, affected innocence, these wonderful little slices of Sidness. The listener journeys into this world of gnomes and sprites, but these are not escapist numbers, these are an evocation of Barrett's childhood, this carefree sense of, of life before the tragic death of his father. And they bring to mind Lewis Carroll, Tolkien, nursery rhymes, all viewed through the skewed lens of psychotropic substances. There was a crooked man who walked a crooked mile. And that otherworldly sense of disorientation uh, and unreality is supported by the psychedelic colouring provided by Richard Wright's eerie keyboard tones. Creating an atmosphere of dissonance and um, as well as weird vocal noises like clicks and squeaks, like Lysergic Tourette's. <laughs> This impression of chaos and randomness is very much a, a childlike vision with confusion and loss just bubbling away beneath the surface. Combine this with the uh, on-stage amoeba blobs and detuning, it all provides a, a very tragic and lurid backdrop to Sid's psychological decline. That is before emerging uh, as the brilliant and dazzling metaphor of the crazy diamond just a few years later. And Barrett seems to be caught in the, the wondrous discoveries of boyhood and the tragic realisation of the end of it all, the fact that it has a finite quality, all perhaps undermined, I think, by the trappings of fame. I mean, let's not forget, this was uh, quite a good year for Pink Floyd, that uh, even prior to this album, it had to see Emily play was a single, as was Arnold Lane, that interesting fable of a, a chap that gets his kicks from stealing women's clothing and underwear from washing lines. This in itself expresses a, a kind of boyish mischievousness. The album's title is lifted from Kenneth Graham's Wind in the Willows, and the album is a fascinating compendium of sound collages, uh, baroque harmonies, and that uh, sense of playfulness and menace as well. The album is almost entirely Sid, with the exception of, of numbers like Take Up Thy Stethoscope and Walk, which is a Roger composition, and uh, uh, Power uh, Talk H. And this Interstellar Overdrive is credited to all the members of the band. A hat needs to be doffed to Norman Smith for channeling the improvised nature of the tracks and running with that sense of experimentation uh, and spaciness. But Norman Smith, of course, was the EMI's man, I think. He was uh, associated with Abbey Road Studios, and he'd been promoted from Beatles engineer to Pink Floyd's producer. This album's a cohesive amalgam of melody, uh, discord, and abstract sound. In fact, uh, the Manic Review describes it as an exemplary work of art, a masterpiece that placed Pink Floyd firmly on the map of psychedelic, experimental, folk-infused rock. Nick Mason says the album was recorded with relative ease. Uh, if I may quote from his autobiography, the ease of recording was in part due to the fact that we were effectively recording our live set and listening to Piper now gives a rough indication of the set list we've been playing at UFO and the Roundhouse. Although the studio versions, to fulfill the demands of the three minute track, were inevitably shorter with more concisely constructed solos. UFO was the band's playground, of course. UFO eventually merges into Middle Earth a little bit down the road. It was set up by Joe Boyd and John Hopkins, John Hoppy Hopkins. In fact, Town Magazine described Pink Floyd as UFO's uh, house orchestra. 
Interestingly, uh, the band featuring uh, Jenny Fabian's book Groupie, although the, the band is thinly disguised as Satin Odyssey, uh, she describes them as uh, the first authentic sound of acid, and it was a sound that was developing thanks to Richard Wright's um, Fafisa organ, as well as his use of the harmonium on this album. And Nick Mason's uh, double drum set, uh, double bass drum kit, which he insisted he must have after watching Ginger Baker play, although that might have been slightly after the, uh, the Piper period. But more importantly is that this album beautifully represents the mystical essence of Sid, whose poetic lyrics and vocal delivery had a boyish charm to them, which proved to be a perfect bedfellow for the psychedelic tones of the music. Uh, which add to that sense of uh, otherworldly exploration. And that in itself was captured in all its lurid swirliness by Vic Singh, who uh, took the photograph, who designed the, the cover for the album. This kaleidoscopic cover that uh, embraces the free-flowing surge of spontaneity and the boundless energy of the songs. Songs that employ abstract imagery, and a kind of a primitive, untamed wandering into this dream-like haze of little fairy tale-like vignettes. It is a phenomenal album whose multi-textured tracks delve deep into our subconscious, where childhood lurks. It undoubtedly possesses all the unpredictable poise of the, the best of children's literature. And Sid, of course, sits at the very centre of it all. Joe Boyd at this time describes Sid as impish, in fact, he goes on to say in his autobiography, uh, the screams of his slide guitar and the offhand way he sang his oddly melodic songs were immediately captivating. Astronomy Domine is uh, a stunning opener for any album. The opening riff is a mixture of sci-fi movie and surf music, uh, unashamedly lifted, it seems, from the Electric Prunes number, Are You Loving Me More But Enjoying It Less? It begins with Peter Jenner's voice through a, a megaphone accompanying those uh, the Morse code sound of the keyboard and the drum melee. This is the track that launched, if you excuse the pun, all those space rock accusations which Roger Waters of course vehemently refutes. Although this song is undoubtedly very spacey, there's no doubt as I've said before that Sid's aesthetic was drawn essentially from folklore and uh, fable I think. Uh, a kind of English romanticised notion of childhood. And Barrett's lyrics here are absolutely excellent and they suggest movement. The use of assonance here lends the song a, a droning quality. I mean, you listen to the lyrics, the sound resounds around the icy waters underground. And very much like those subterranean icy waters underground, the song has a, a fluid grace. And this is all due to Sid's beautiful use of poetic metre. The choice of the title has given rise to one a quite interesting interpretation that uh, perhaps the title was, was lifted from the French translation of Bertrand Russell's uh, The Basic Writings from 1961. In that book he states that the world of astronomy dominates my imagination and the muffled narration and those pulsating beats and cascading harmonies. It is in the words of one critic, if I may quote, it introduces us to the wondrous space horror infused psychedelia. Through the digital beeps and space slopes, astronomy domine orbits into the space explorations of the 60s, yet intoxicated by the flowery sounds of the summer of love. I'll repeat what I said, there's no doubt that this is an epic opener. Lucifer Sam is a very much mid-60s uh, British groove to it, which makes it less psychedelic, I think. Uh, it uh, has a Batman-esque riff which accompanies Barrett's musing over his uh, cat, his Siam cat, Percy the Rat Catcher, renamed Lucifer Sam. And Jennifer Gentle, the witch, is a, an allusion perhaps to the uh, 15th century song uh, riddles wisely expounded in which three pretty and intelligent sisters Jennifer, 
Gentle and Rosemary all love the same night. A lady led in the North Country It's certainly apparent here that the riff of this song has an almost proto-punk vibe to it. Also, Traffic's song Paper Sun sounds as if it could have been an influence here. <music> Matilda Mother represents a common thread or theme in Barrett's work, and that is this nostalgia for childhood, yet tearing away. Uh, beneath the surface of that is this uh, understanding that it can never be regained. The original version of the song contained uh, quoted lyrics from Hilaire Belloc's Cautionary Tales. The lyrics went, uh, There was a boy whose name was Jim, his friends were very good to him, they gave him tea and toast and jam and slices of delicious ham. And the iambic beat of Belloc's, it just works so beautifully with uh, Sid's lyrics. However, the Belloc estate were not happy about the band's use of uh, these lines and they eventually have to replace them. Flaming is a gorgeously ethereal number that almost represents a childlike inner monologue or maybe perhaps some regressive acid trip, I'm not entirely sure. Verses such as lazing in the foggy dew, sitting on a unicorn and the childlike interjections of yippee, you can't see me but I can you, like a child playing hide and seek. And Waters' use of the slide whistle and these wind-up toys all contribute to the atmosphere of this one. Uh, they cultivate a magical, delicate atmosphere of wonder and spaciness. Alone in the clouds all blue, lying on an eiderdown. These lines very much uh, conform to that uh, Sid archetype, really, what one critic has described as a Barettian heroic fantasy. Power Talk H is the first of two instrumentals on this album, but the very heart of it is a blues-driven riff. Andrew King said it was chosen because of its mixtures of plosives and hard sounds. He said it's more onomatopoeic than anything else. There are quite a few interesting interpretations as to the origins of the title and song, if you care to look into it. Take up thy stethoscope and walk, the closer of the first side is a Roger penned piece. Uh, it was also um, the first Waters number to be recorded by the Floyd. The title was inspired by a passage in the Gospel according to St. John, uh, chapter 5, verse 8. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. You get a patient who's lying on this uh, hospital bed who sinks into a verbal delirium and incorporates the phrases, Jesus bled, pain is red, greasy spoon, and June gloom. Waters here is perhaps uh, tearing a page out of Sid's book, and he seems to enjoy playing with assonance and the sound of words. But whereas Sid's lyrics represent a kind of dandy dreamer who explores the textures of psychedelia, Waters, uh, Waters' lyrics are far more cynical and mocking. Interstellar Overdrive is one of the most famous pieces on this album and would form a prominent part of the Floyd's live set. Uh, although the live version would extend on for about 20 minutes, where it's about cut down to about 10 minutes on the album. It became the unofficial song of the that underground event, the 14-hour Technicolor Dream, that strong and catchy main riff that just deteriorates into a collage of psychedelic sound and effects. <laughs> The Gnome is primarily an acoustic track which sees Barrett drawing us into his world of fairy tales once more. In the song he tells the story of a little man, a gnome named Grimble Grumble, who we are told uh, wore a scarlet tunic and a blue-green hood. Interestingly in Old English the words Grimble and Grumble means to pollute or to sully. This number has all the hallmarks of Tolkien lifted from the Fellowship of the Rings. In fact, the hobbits owe their salvation to a strange character who sings nonsense rhymes, wears a blue coat and sports a long brown beard. This number reflects the imaginary inner world of Sid Barrett and is very much akin, I think, to the songs written for the Incredible String Band. In fact, Joe Boyd in his autobiography says Robin Williamson of the Incredible String Band is the only one he ever met that was very much on Sid's sort of wavelength. Not so much the tonalities, but the words of the songs. There are parallels uh, to be drawn 
uh, with Sid's songs and the incredible string band numbers like uh, uh, the Hedgehog song by Mike Heron or Robin Williamson's Witch's Hat. In quiet places where the moss grows green Chapter 24 is quite a philosophical number with Barrett's melody floating above the transcending uh, musical motif. Just before the, the middle part comes in that has an almost Middle Eastern flavour to it. And the Scarecrow makes uh, beautiful use of uh, percussive sounds with a wonderful ebb and flow of uh, Richard Wright's organ. It becomes very much a kind of an acoustic montage. Uh, Barrett's imagination at play and this bucolic inspiration rambling away in the in the vision that is this number. Uh, in this song he presents not a gnome out of the pages of Tolkien or a rat from Kenneth Graham's Wind in the Willows, but a black and green scarecrow with a bird on his hat and straw everywhere. Uh, perhaps a disturbing analogy for Sid himself, that sense of detachment. The Scarecrow certainly has a psychedelic feel to it, and it? it's almost reminiscent of the, the birds. Uh, I come and stand at every door. Bike is a brilliant uh, and chilling number as well. Fantastic use of uh, Barrett's use of poetic metre, which is at times jarring and expertly off kilter. It's like a child boasting whose litany of possessions is punctuated by the swimming melancholy of the chorus, a girl who fits in with my world. Wonderful piano effects by Richard Wright throughout on this one. And the song ends with that uh, interesting psychedelic collage of sound. According to Andrew Rawlingson, a Cambridge friend, said the original working title for Bike was um, The Bike Song, and it was one of Sid's oldest compositions. And the song is infused not so much with the dreamy psychedelic textures of the previous songs, but more a, 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 a vaudevillian musical atmosphere. Charles Penrose is perhaps considered another influence here in the, the Barrett worldview. Nevertheless, we still get that sense of boyish exploration lifted straight from the pages of A.A. A. Milne's Now We Are Six. Um, and also the, the fairy tale, The Gingerbread Man. There's no doubt about it that this album is a brilliant and unique work. It captures the strange and wondrous world of Sid's imagination. It's like, uh, it's like taking a trip in Toad's new motor car. Well, you've been watching an episode of Classic Album Review. Uh, if you've watched to this point without switching off, I want to thank you for doing just that. I urge you to click like, subscribe, and do check that notification bell. And I will now leave you with my closing salvo, which, as you know, is hope you're safe, staying well, but most importantly, that you keep listening.